there's this move to start people early, um, maybe very soon after diagnosis, kind of to engage them, that, uh, how important this is. Are there popula groups of people that you might really want to start right away? Um, uh, who, who would those people be, Dan? Well, sure, so, I mean, somebody who presents with acute infection, right. uh, uh, who has symptomatic uh, uh, disease uh, because they are going through uh, new infection and they have the flu-like illness, we really want to get them on treatment right away. And the reason we want to do that is they ha typically have very high virus loads, and so they are at the at greatest risk of transmitting to their partners. Uh, and that's why getting them on therapy is going to be so important. There's also good evidence, and, and Eric can probably talk more about that, about the individual health benefits in acute infection of going on uh, on treatment right away and better preserving CD4 counts and the like. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, so that's been an, uh, sort of an ongoing area of research. I think the public health perspective is huge, as you pointed out, and that has to be true. Um, that these are people with high viral loads, and we also know that their behavior has put them right, at, high at high risk. Right, they're at high risk, right, because they, they just, just got, got infected. Right? Exactly. Yeah, right. so, so the public health part, I think, is a slam dunk for early therapy in those people. And then there's all the biologic reasons. There is data that, you know, starting early translates into a higher CD4 set point which may or may not be clinically relevant, but it, it certainly Probably. can't be a bad thing. Except, right, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then there's all of these other potential benefits as far as decreasing the size of the reservoir. And you know, we're not gonna spend a lot of time today talking about cure research, because Dan would need an extra hour, or <laughs> Joe would need an extra two hours, but we just, you know, I think this is an area of interest for people, and the sooner you control the disease, it may be that the reservoir is smaller and it'll be easier, or easier to overcome. So I think there's a lot of potential benefits of early therapy. Uh, there's the real public health benefit, the idea of engaging people in care immediately, I think is a huge advantage in targeting this population. So I would agree, that's one population we should be trying to treat as early as possible if they're ready to start. I mean, I think it's important to, to just remember that that is a time period of intense immunologic damage. Yeah. When someone right. is symptomatic from acute HIV infection, their immune system is getting hit hard. And whatever you can do to you know, abrogate that is probably going to be beneficial for the patient in the long run. I think the, the um, flip side is the um, people who present uh, with very advanced disease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, unfortunately, it may be as many as 20 or 25 percent of people uh, uh, who are diagnosed each year are first diagnosed when they get hospitalized with an acute opportunistic infection, right. pneumocystis, uh, um, uh, toxoplasmosis, uh, depending on uh, the epidemiology of the patient. Uh, and there are good studies that show that uh, uh, relatively immediate initiation, maybe not the very same day that you start somebody on uh, trimethoprim sulfa for their pneumocystis, but within uh, a week or two, two right. getting them on antiretroviral therapy uh, really dramatically improves improves their uh, survival and, uh, and the, reduces the chance of a recurrent AIDS uh, event. Yeah, no, for sure. And then the third group that I think of, which I guess is probably obvious to everybody, is pregnant women. Yes, of right? course. And, and you're not re you don't like wait around till they get into the late second or third trimester, right, Colleen? I mean, we're really... Just treat. Just treat, <laughs> right? I mean, so, because there you're, you have obviously uh, multiple reasons. Again, the transmission reason may be the biggest one, but 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 probably also outcomes are Im improved. So um, uh, what are things that we have to consider when we see a, a, a person who's newly diagnosed with HIV? What, what kind of comorbid conditions or, or, um, or lab tests that um, uh, are, are are important when we start thinking about therapy, Colleen? What, what are we? Yeah, so um, initially when you're seeing someone, of course you're gonna to wanna to measure their CD4 count and their viral load. You're gonna check for transmitted drug resistance. If someone could be starting off at a point where the first line regimen might not be the first choice for them, you need to know about that. And then beyond that, it is fairly simple. We wanna see if someone has active hepatitis B infection because that's gonna determine how we treat them. We must treat their hepatitis B infection at the same time as their HIV um, if they are hepatitis B positive. And then after that, it's, it's renal function yep. um, is really the major thing that determines the treatment regimen, um, and potentially in some cases, liver disease as well. Um, but those are the main factors in comorbidities. Um, of course, other medications that folks are on um, that may interact with the HIV medications need to be reviewed all the time. Um, if we're treating an opportunistic infection such as TB, those medications will likely interact with what we're um, gonna treat the HIV with, and so being cognizant of that and um, you know, choosing a regimen that's gonna agree with the other medications the patient's on um, is also important.